Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here from Kelby1.com and we have an intermediate level tutorial today that we're going to do and this is the image we're going to work on which is pretty messed up. Uh, this is intermediate level in that I, I, if you're watching this, you've got a little more experience in Lightroom. I can kind of move at that speed and talk to you at that level. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get right to it. Let's head over here to the develop module and uh, well, let's hide this other side so I see the picture a little better. Well, you can see a lot of the problems here where, where our sky is blown out. Uh, you can see the triangle over here in the top right. This little triangle over here is telling you that white triangle is telling you that there's a uh, look at that, P put my cursor over and you can see, but it's okay because the thing that's blown out is the sun. <laughs> the sun is pretty much always going to be blown out, but this is taken at sunrise. So the sun's not fully up yet. And, and I'll tell you what I'll do when I have a, just a bald sky like this, but you can see there's a little blue over here and there's a little yellow here. So there is something there. My first thought is first I set my profile and this is a raw photo. So my profile will probably either be Adobe Landscape or Vivid, so my starting place looks better. Let's look at Vivid. That's a little better. And how's Landscape? Oh, I think that one looks better. So I'm gonna start with Landscape. But my go-to technique is to drop the exposure big time to where the sky looks good and then try to fix everything else, like bring back the dark shadows and stuff. So let's do that. I'm gonna go watch, I'm gonna take the exposure and I'm gonna drop it way down until the sky looks good. So now we have at least kind of, a, I mean, there's no clouds, so it's kind of a lame picture, but at least the sky has some detail. I can go to the highlight slider, maybe bring back a little more detail in that sun kind of area. So the top half's almost fixed, right? It's pretty good. And then I just have to deal with the bottom half, which, which requires me to open up the shadows a bit. Uh, I'm gonna set my white and black point by holding the shift key on my keyboard. I double click right in the word whites. It sets the white point. I double click right in the word blacks over here and it sets the white and black point. That's pretty good. Now to bring out texture and detail and dimension in the photo, I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. And this is the right kind of photo to crank up the clarity. Uh, there's a lot of texture and a lot of layers of texture, so that, that'll work nicely. Dehaze. So this is not really a very hazy picture. It's really fairly clear, uh, except for, you know, over here there's you know, a little bit of haze. But what's nice about it, when you crank the dehaze, watch what it does to the blues in the sky. So I get a little, little benefit there. That doesn't always work because the sky isn't always that bluish. And But in this case, you know, we can get away with it. But I don't want you to think of uh, dehaze as only getting rid of haze. Think of it as another version of contrast, okay? So we have a regular contrast slider, which we haven't even moved. Let's crank it up a little bit. Now I can maybe open up the shadows a little bit more. We're, we're in pretty good shape, really. A couple things that you might do at this point. Uh, well, I, I, you can see I've got um, a problem here. I've got a little, look that red dot, looks like maybe a little bit of lens flare. And then I've got a problem there. Yeah, there's some little like sensor dust and junk. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of those now. I'm going to get the spot removal tool, make my brush just a little bigger than the spot and just click once and that should take care of that. I'm using the left and right bracket keys, by the way, to resize my brush, and those look pretty good. And is there any other little things? Sometimes, even though these are not bad, that little rock sticking up there, I'm probably gonna get rid of that. Maybe some of these reflections from the sun, certainly that little red dot there. And honestly, I should be making my brush smaller. Uh, I also go through here and just get rid of any little distracting junk. It's just a single click, you just move over it, and that looks like a little starfish shell looking thing uh, that's gone and anything let me back off a little that looks a little distracting any little of these little bright spots that are made from rocks or just reflections anything that might just draw your eye away from where I want you to look all right now our our foreground is this big rock which I thought was kind of interesting let's go ahead and get the adjustment brush and let's just bring up the exposure a little. Double click on effect to reset all the sliders to zero. So we, you're gonna double click on that word right there, effect that resets all the sliders to zero. 
Let's crank up the exposure a little, and I'm going to click in a couple of these spaces that already have highlights, like over here and maybe there and there. And maybe I'll do a little over here, maybe on those rocks over there, and just a, a click here or there. Now, that's too much. And, and in fact, I, I spilled over a little bit here, so I'm going to hold the Option key on Mac, which would be the Alt key on Windows, and just kind of get rid of it. I went too far there. Now, that's too much of a, of a hit of light. That's over a stop. So I'm going to pull it back so it doesn't look so. I mean, I want to draw your eye there, but I don't want to scream, hey, I use the adjustment brush. Uh, let's see what else. Let's back off a little. We're looking better. I think I would go and get the graduated tool up here and then darken the exposure. And let's darken the sky a little more. There we go. Now that gives us a very dark blue up there because it's actually darkening the exposure. And the trick that I would use to fix that is to go over here to the temperature slider and just drag it to the left to kick some more blue in there to bring back some nice blue. I think we're in, we're in pretty good shape. Let me just uh, click off that so we can see. Uh, of course, it needs sharpening. Everything needs sharpening. So we'll go down to the detail panel. We'll crank up the sharpening amount from its defaults, maybe up to 80 or something here. Kind of make it nice and sharp. And actually, it's pretty simple. I think we're, we're in a better place than we were. Let me hide the sidebar. We'll look at our before and after by pressing the letter Y. Uh, Looks like the, ex well, two things that I might do now that I see them side by side. The overall exposure looks a little dark to me now with some of the changes that we've made. So let me hit the letter Y again to get us back. And I might just bring up the overall exposure just a little bit. I think that still looks pretty good. And then it looks a tad too colorful to me. Now, I haven't done anything to boost the color. I haven't messed with the vibrance or saturation, but increasing the haze adds color, increasing contrast adds color. So I'm just going to lower the vibrancy amount so it's not quite so punchy. Well, that's a little too much. There I buy minus 14. So anyway, there you go. There's kind of a, uh, a quick before and after so you can kind of see how to, how to a rescue a shot, rescue a shot like that. Not like it's a great shot. It's not an awesome shot, but it was one that I happened to notice needed some, needed some rescuing. Hey, by the way, while I've got you here looking at a, a Lightroom tutorial, uh, why don't you head over to kelby1.com and sign up for our free membership. It's completely free. It doesn't cost you anything. Go get the free membership. We have a bunch of classes there, including some Lightroom classes. You can watch them for free. There's a bunch of free classes. They're hand-picked. They're really popular, awesome classes. And uh, you can get some other goodies while you're there as well just by being a free Kelby One member. So head on over to kelby1.com. And there's three types of membership. There is a free membership. There is a plus plan, which is 10 bucks a month, which gives you access to hundreds of classes. And then there's a pro plan if you're you know, really serious about this stuff. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Have a great weekend and we'll catch you next week, everybody.